Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Alleluia. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. O oh, glory, O oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. O oh, glory, O oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Alleluia. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. O oh, glory, O oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. O oh, glory, O oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Alleluia, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia, Hosanna, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia, Hosanna, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord. You are welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's sing glory, glory, glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Glory, glory, glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah, Hosanna be to the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome, welcome, everyone joining. Please share, 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 share. Share, share, share. Let us drive a high traffic here today. This Friday edition of Ask Your Question broadcast. Invite all of your contacts. Go to your share button. Keep sharing, keep sharing. Let everyone you know, you love, you like be alerted that Ask Your Question broadcast with Femi Manuel is on. This is Friday's edition. Share, 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 share. And let me know you are there. Type your name, the city and the country where you are. I can see Adiola Ojeni. Welcome, welcome. I can see Adipeju. Ola Egbe Ade Inka singing Hosanna with me. Oluruti me. Ola Yemi Tonode. Ade Yemi Adiliki. Good to hear you, sir. I'm also happy to know you are there. Dolapo Ogundipe. I'm glad you know you are there. Yemi Felix. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please. Your name, the city, and the country. Your name, the city, and the country you are joining us from. YouTube is also good. Elizabeth Abiola on YouTube is joining from Edmonton, Canada on YouTube. Ofashi Ike watching from Dubai on YouTube. Funke Adewale, you did not tell me where you are joining us from on YouTube. Mabel Emeng. Where are you joining us from? i like to please mention the city and the country. We are a global family. Let the whole world, the whole world know. Adelike Adeyemi from Ikotun. God bless you. A.Y. Yakubu from Manchester, sir. Greeting from Manchester. God bless you. God bless you. Yetu de Adewo Luda. Mommy, Abekuta. Mommy, life member of Tony Point Global Family. How is Daddy, man? Ah, God bless you. God bless Daddy. 
We are very proud of you. We are humbled to have people like you, man. God bless you. Mudishola Akiola from Ushugu. All right, Israelite. Ife Echuku from Alaba. God bless you. Ola Deyo. Ola Itan. Ola Da Kosande from Ibadan. Please share, share, share. Everybody keep sharing, keep sharing. Everybody keep sharing, keep sharing. God bless you. Keep sharing. Oh, keep sharing. Let's drive a very high traffic here today. Let's drive a very high traffic here today. Let's drive a very high traffic here today. God bless you. Share, share, share. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Yes. I want to see so many people online here tonight. Keep sharing. Keep sharing, okay? Idi Roko. Akiola, Rachel Oluyemi Akiola from Idi Roko. God bless you. On YouTube. All right. Benin City. Alarakwe Solomon. All right. Daddy, I've seen you. And I didn't want to MFR. We love Pastor Femi Manuel. We are proud of you. Sir. I'm also proud of you, Daddy and Mommy. How are my... Uh, other brothers, uh, your children all over the world. God bless you. God bless you. Aha. Mommy has replied me. Daddy is fine, sir. He is on my left side. <laughs> I like that. I like to be like you when I grow to your age. <laughs> oh, we thank God. You will live long. You will live well for us. Everybody keep sharing. What is all for discussing tonight very interesting and i like contributions from all of you i like contribution please be ready to make contribution as you learn from what i share if you have experience if you have a knowledge if you have information addition that can help this family please uh make your contribution type it out and we will all read it and we'll all be blessed <laughs> Israelite, Feachuku, my second father's son, <laughs> I love you. I love you. Hey, everybody. YouTube is clear. Facebook is clear. Instagram is clear. I like more I like more people on Instagram to come in. I be able to see you. God bless you. Ademola Derito from Ibadan, Nigeria. God bless you, Aderito. Adebo Elekuru. Elekuru is long I had you uh, from Debshire, United Kingdom. God bless you. How is, my, how is your wife, my daughter, and how are my children there? I hope they are doing good. We are all praying for you, and I know you are all praying for us too. God bless you. Okay, let's hit the ground running. Let's hit the ground running. Please learn, learn, learn. This program is for learning, wisdom, knowledge, interaction, counseling, mentoring. We go deep into the scripture and practical discussion, practical counseling. This is a place to learn and deepen your knowledge in the things of God, in the things of life. Life is both spiritual and, 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 and natural and the two must be beautifully combined to have a fulfilling life. So as we go on tonight, we find out what people what people are passing through, what people are going through, and uh, we learn from there. We learn from there, okay? Okay, I see the YouTube I was looking for. God bless you. God bless you. Please, Abayo your Miloko Nigeria on YouTube. Everybody, keep sharing. This traffic is still low. This traffic is too low. Share, share, share. Everybody keep sharing. Michigan Amara from Abuja. And if you are joining us for the first time today, please indicate. If you are joining this live broadcast for the first time today, type, I'm a first timer. I'm a first joiner. I'm joining for the first time. And let Tony Point Global Family on. welcome them lovingly. Type their name back to them and welcome them. If that is coming up on YouTube, all of us on YouTube, let's welcome them. 
let's welcome them if you are joining us for the first time please indicate type your name and say i'm a first time i hear they are already doing that now please welcome them welcome them we like you to be this is a global family and you are a first timer only once when we come on again on monday you are no longer a first timer ask your question broadcast comes up twice a week mondays and fridays it used to be mondays wednesdays and friday but uh, uh the the load was too heavy so we now make it made it monday and friday please i know many people are going to watch later you can watch live and watch later but don't ever miss it okay let's hit the ground running daddy on the issue of adoption must one ask god to know if it is the will his will to adopt Somebody is starting us off on adoption issue. On the issue of adoption, must one ask God to know if it is his will to adopt? Like I said, I want you to make contributions if you have any to make. But listen to me first. My own take is no. Must one ask God if it is his will to adopt? And I say no. You don't ask God, you don't ask God for his will on what he has clearly stated in the Bible. I want us to hear that very well. You don't go on asking God for his will on what he has clearly stated in the Bible. It's like saying, God, is it your will for me to pray and fast? When it has already said, pray without ceasing. This kind cannot go except without prayer and except with prayer and fasting. Is it your will for me to pay tithe? When he has clearly said, bring in your tithe and offering into my storehouse. Is it your will for me to love my neighbor? When he has already said, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, whatever has been clearly stated in the Bible, you don't go to ask God whether it is his will. The clearest will of God is what is stated in the Bible. Just like I have told us, the Bible is the highest vision. Any visionary, any prophet that brings anything that is contrary to the Bible should be trashed. The Bible is the strongest vision. The Bible is the voice of God. The Bible is the will of God. So anything that is clearly written in the Bible, you don't go on ask again, God, is it your will? That would be a product of ignorance or perhaps we want to willfully disobey him. God's clearest will is in his word. So the issue of adoption, we have trashed it again and again. We are adopted children of God. In Christ, he has adopted us. He addressed us as his adopted children. And I said, Jesus Christ was an adopted son of Joseph the carpenter. Jesus had no earthly biological father, but the, God instructed joseph through angel the angel accepted adopting it was his earthly father by adoption so god started adoption program adoption is biblical adoption is scriptural even when you have your own children you should adopt if you are able if you bring up an adopted son or daughter as a lawyer as a doctor an it person a business guru as a pastor as a minister as parent to other children you are you are doing great in the kingdom so anything that is clearly stated in the bible you don't go asking god again whether it's your will or not that is a truth i want us to please hold on to adiola jenny said yes sir whatever has been clearly stated in the bible is the will of God. There is no point asking again, God, is that your will? His will, the Bible is his will. And whatever has been well stated in the Bible is his will. All right. I hope that is uh, noted and that is taken. So before you go on wanting to know whether a thing you want to do is God's will, search the scripture first because his will. It's clearly if you can interpret that thing with the Bible and the Spirit of God in you confirms, then go on. And in case you want additional confirmation, he said in the amount of two or three witnesses, every two shall be confirmed. Then go to your mentor, your pastor or your mentor, somebody you trust that has a higher knowledge, a higher grace, and can also 
explain it to you. Daddy, what should one do when prophecies are not coming to pass? Ha. So we go from adoption to prophecies. There are no go, there is no no go area on ask a question brokers. You can ask me anything under the sun about God, about life, anything. Anything. And please, those who want to make contribution, if you have any contribution to make, please type it at the comments bar. Look at the bottom of your screen. There's a comment bar there. Type it there. Daddy, what should one do when prophecies are not coming to pass? <laughs> when prophecies are not coming to pass. Ah. Uh, now, before you take prophecy serious coming from any vessel, any Christian, any man or woman of God, assess that man or woman of God first. The news is as authentic as the new carrier, the news carrier or the news caster. And then in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9, he says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. The one prophesying and what God has said. Now, in the area of prophets, because these days we have so many prophets in the body of Christ now. If you are within Nigerian space, <laughs> even those of you that are not in Nigeria, Adeola, and the rest of you, I am sure you saw that the social media was inundated with all kinds of prophecies about who is winning Nigerian presidency. <laughs> I have never seen God spoke like I have seen in the last few weeks before last Saturday, the presidential election. All kinds of prophecies, all kinds of permutations, all kinds of God said to me, I saw God, you God told me, God told me. Sometimes you laugh, sometimes you cry, sometimes you are ashamed. <laughs> okay, that God told me, who will be the president, who will win? That is not essentially what prophecies are meant for. No. That is not essentially what it's meant for. Whoever prophesies edifies the body. It's for edification. And of course, God sometimes reveals things, but not the way we have bastardized and abused it in our days. Everyone is now a prophet. I wonder where many of them will put their faces now that the election has come the way it has come. First Corinthians 14, 29. He was talking, Paul was talking to the Corinthian Christian. He says, when they come to prophecy, prophesy and only the service, he says, let two or three speak and let the others judge. Now, if prophecies were infallible if prophets and prophecies were infallible god would the Bible will not say when two or three people had prophesied in things let the other people judge in other words every door says the lord should be judged you don't just take it uh line sink and hooker you don't just take it if anybody is prophesying and saying, don't say the Lord, God told me, God told me. You are not there when God told him. You are not him. I don't argue with those who say God told them, God told them. I just want to know what my Bible says and I stay within my own boundary. If you say God told you, I was not there when God told you. But you cannot force what God told you on me. It is you he told. He didn't tell me. And the Bible says the true mark of a prophet of God is that what he says shall come to pass. If somebody says God told him, if somebody is prophesying something, and that thing did not come to pass, then God did not tell him. All those who said God told them, this is the winner of the Nigerian presidency, presidential election, and the thing did not come out that way, they will know what it means. Those who said God told them they will be the next president, and we discover that they are not even near being president, we don't need to argue. We don't need to argue with anybody. The true mark of a prophet of God is that whatever he says shall come to pass. 
If what he says did not come to pass, then that was him talking and then using the name of God. And that can only confuse those who don't know the word of God. If you know the word of God, you will just smile. And coming to this political issue of Nigeria, you know why I laugh a lot? I have been into politics. I have been into Nigerian politics. I've gone through the trenches. Many of my friends, pastors, who jump up and try to make all kinds of declarations, they know nothing about Nigeria's political system. They don't know anything about it. Sometimes you laugh, sometimes you cry, sometimes you are ashamed. Complete ignorance. Just, just. And some of us pastors, when we stand behind our pulpit, Talking to our congregation, we, 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 it's like, it's like we are talking to the 200 million Nigeria. I said to one of my friends, I said, look, how many people are in your church? How many people are you talking to? Maybe 1,000 people, maybe 500 people, maybe 5,000, maybe 50,000, maybe 100,000. You know the population of Nigeria? 200 million. That's infinite testimony. And those who are before you in the congregation, many of them don't even believe in what you are saying. <laughs> Many of them have their candidates. They will not vote for your candidates. Oh my God. I wish people will uh, let us just stay where God put us and uh, don't let us begin to say what God did not say. So what will I do when prophecies are not coming to pass? Find out what those prophecies are. Those who made those prophecies to you. Find out what the word of God says about those prophecies. And... If it is God, it will come to pass. If it is not God, it will not come to pass. I don't know what some other people are saying. I know some of you must have been making comments. Yes, sir. <laughs> A lot of the so called prophecy are soothsaying, <laughs> luring people away based on their emotions. A genuine prophecy must edify the church or body of Christ or build the faith. Prophecy is not for forecasting an outcome of election or football competition. Read your Bible and know your God. God bless you. I was going to add that. You will hear prophecy about which team will win a foot in a football match. Prophecies are not for all those ones. Who will win a governorship election? March 11? No! I knew who will win. Not because I saw a vision. I have been in politics. I know how it works. I know the dynamics of Nigeria environment politics. I know the dynamics. So it's not as it has, it has nothing to do with God told me, God told me. Prophecies are not for that. All those things are just permutations, forecasting, you know, deceiving people. And that is why how we many of us pastors we, we just lure people into poverty, we lure them into wrong marriages. We lure them into wrong journeys. God said, God said, instead of opening the Bible and getting them to know how to seek the mind of the Holy Spirit, how to interpret the Bible in their situation. Oh, I didn't know we had so many prophets in Nigeria. <laughs> From the good to the bad to the ridiculous. Wow. Nigeria, we hear the... <laughs> the Vera, Richard, very true, my father. Very true. So if I said this state, Lagos State, Oyo State, Ogun State, I can tell you who we win. Not that I saw vision, not that I had a dream, but I have been inside the trenches. I know the political calculation and equation. I know what makes politics tick in Nigeria. I know where the votes are coming from. I know those who have done their job. I know how Nigerian people behave. I know the voters. Many of those that are talking don't even have voters. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, let's leave them alone. But please, if it is God that said it, it will come to pass. If it did not come to pass, God did not say it. And don't live your whole life based on prophecies. Live your life based on the word of God. Live your life based on hearing the, 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 the voice of the Holy Spirit. Live your life based on understanding the principles and complying with it. You will make it in life. All right. Fasuru, I do Fasuru. We are. So are you in the UK already? God forgive our off and on prophet. God doesn't congratulate himself. 
we pastors, I'm not taking myself out to we pastors in Nigeria, we are very funny, very, very funny, like I said, we have preached on people and saw vision for them into their poverty, to their wrong marriages, to their wrong journeys, instead of teaching them the principles of life and asking them to comply. Don't say the Lord, don't say the Lord, when God has not said anything. Hmm. Elizabeth, Daddy, please put more light on these issues. Sir. Must I pay tight on the money? I will take that. I will take that next time. Ademola Denito, if you make up your mind, you are adopting for the benefit of the God. Okay, you start talking about adoption. All right. All right. Charity. I need the account number for the tight. Charity Nwosu, send that message. Send that message of asking for the commission's account to plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four thousand. Can somebody put that line, that number online, the number for the commission, the request for commission's account, so that people like Charity Nwosu can see. We don't give, we don't give our uh, the commission's account number on air because we are not here to take ask for people for money. We are not here for money. But should anybody want to be a part of the kingdom, see it as a fertile soil, and want to sow or tithe, you will personally request for the commission's account number so it can be personal. So make your request. Uh, if I see that on the screen, is it there? Plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four thousand. You are very right, sir. Richard. Okay. 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 Let's go on. Daddy, I am really addicted to alcohol and I don't want it anymore. How do I overcome it, sir? Somebody is addicted to alcohol and he's saying he doesn't want again. How does he overcome it? Can there be people? Are there people who can give that cancer? Is there any uh, addict before to alcohol, to drug, to anything? And by God's grace, you are delivered now, totally cleaned up. How did you do it? How did you do it? I am really addicted to alcohol and I don't want it anymore. How do I come over it? Now, my first reaction here is that you should give your life to Jesus Christ. You should ask Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. Then we teach warfare prayer all the time. Subject this to warfare prayer. Google and bring out and ask Google to give you scriptures against scriptures to overcome addiction. Because this is an addiction and obsession. And it did not start in one day. It grew and has become an addiction. Google will give you a lot how to overcome addiction. Overcoming addiction or obsession. And then engage these Bible verses in warfare prayers. Fasting along with it, once in a while, as the Holy Ghost put in your heart, put back to sit behind it and then watch and pray. Be determined. Holy Ghost determination. Flesh determination is not enough, but with prayer and watchfulness and fasting and the scriptures against any addiction against any possession and you discover that your freedom and you continue it when the urge come you use scriptures to, to to cast it out casting down all imagination and every high thing that exerts itself in getting the knowledge of god that's second coordinates chapter 10 verse 4. that one is a stronghold over your life pull it down stronghold so you begin to say stronghold of alcoholism i pull you down stronghold of addiction i pull you down i cast you away other scriptures we call you is a battle and when you continue like that like that like that your spirit and your soul will absorb the scriptures at the point and urge for alcoholism for drug for immorality for inordinate sex for anger we leave you the same way you treat all addiction. We have said that again and again, but we know new, new people are joining us every day. And so if you are in any form of addiction, it's a spiritual thing. It's a warfare. It's a battle. 
And he says the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of that stronghold. It could be anger. It could be covetousness. It could be unforgiving spirit. It could be pride. It could be sex addiction. It could be obsession to something. It could be, it could be fantasy. It could be addiction to pornography or crimes. It could be masturbation. It could be lesbianism. All kinds of addiction. And you, you wage war. It's a war. It's a spiritual thing. You can't, you can't overcome it cannot by, by your power because you are, you, are, you are already subdued. You are captured. But the prisoners, lawful cap uh, captives, will be set free. Uh, Google will throw so many scriptures up for you to pray. By the grace of God, you will be totally set free. Okay, Shima Judith, for the brother that is addicted to alcohol, should do warfare prayer and, if possible, change your former location. Put battle seat behind it fast about it, okay? All those things we are saying. It's not even changing location, it is just reposition his mind and watch and pray. The urge will come, the temptation will come. Is the one that will say no. And then Google scriptures to overcome temptations. Google, give me Bible scriptures to overcome temptation. It will throw many more. So you can add all these scriptures together, maybe 25 verses, 20 verses. You are chanting them, you are claiming them, night, day, afternoon, morning, within a short time. Like I said, your spirit will, will imbibe the scripture and the other wrong spirit will go away. All right. Are you being blessed? Adiola, let me see what we are saying on addiction. Are you born again? Also start renewing your mind with the word of God, Romans 12, 12. Okay. Also introduce productive activities that replaces activities that lead you to alcohol. Avoid association that encourage you to drink. Yes. Avoid association that encourage you. Or friend that offer you free drinks. <laughs> association determines destination. And like I said, that is in all things, not just in alcohol, in all other you no know, tobacco, cigarette, drug, womanizing, all kinds of things, immorality, prostitution. You must redefine your association. You must run away, you say, free from the appearance of evil. You must avoid places you go, people you move with that that, make, that lure you into sin. You must do that. That's why I would say, watch and pray. After a while, those things will leave you. Okay? God bless you. Agubi Adiolua, she said, yes, I'm blessed. Anita Jonah, change your friends if they are always leading you to drink. Like I said, it's not only drinking, it's all, all addiction. Sir, I am finding it difficult to secure a permanent job. What should I do, sir? So we go to secure a permanent job. I'm finding it difficult to secure a permanent job. What should I do, sir? Now, my first question is, what's your career? What's your training? What's your profession? What value do you have to add? You are finding it difficult to secure a permanent job. What do you know to do? Employers pay for value that employees are bringing into the company or the organization. So what are you bringing? What are you good at? That's number one. Number two, why are you looking for a permanent job? And I'm not just talking to this one, I'm talking to all of us. Why are you looking for a permanent job? I think everyone should look for a temporary job. Where you follow our web creation stories, our books. Where is our book? Our book is here. Why people are poor and the way out of it. Why are you looking for a permanent job? Young people listening to me, don't look for a permanent job. Look for jobs you will do for a while. To build yourself after your training along your passion in your industry look for the job you do for a while to gather some money and launch out on your own while you are still young or whether you are in partnership with some other except you are a career person like i've always said they build that career to the very very top and the more you go up in your career the more value you add to yourself the more earning you make and when you begin to earn more money then you must start your investment journey no non-investor will be well -being. Somebody help me tell 
the world. No non-investor will be wealthy. And there are so many investments you can make. I'm glad Ojeni, Adiola Ojeni is here today. He's a, a business investment consultant expert. You, you go for training. I mean, now read your book. Connect to people online. Don't look for permanent job. I don't recommend that for you. Nigeria, don't look for government job where you are thinking of you will retire at 65. 65 years or 35 years in service will never come first. No. That was in the days of ignorance. No, 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 no. Don't look for permanent job. Look for the job you will do for a while while you build, while you prepare yourself to launch out. You are your, you are your best boss. Be your own boss. That's my counsel. Be your own boss. No matter how much they pay you, be your own boss. Except you co-own the organization. It's an NGO. You co-own it. But working for government, working work for a while. Save money and launch out. That is my answer for the younger generation. For the older generation, you are only on retirement age. Well, you didn't hear this on time. Do whatever and I want to believe you have some investments. Everybody should be an investor. No non-investor will be wealthy. I've said that again and again. I hear you, daddy, me. Inshallah, Motola, yes, sir. We are blessed. I really miss all this program. I've been a member since my polytechnic days in Zongo. Since 2000. Where are you, Inshallah? Motola, where are you now? You have been following since year 2000. I went to Polytechnic. When I used to come for Loud in Poly, Loud in Poly with everyone. <laughs> I was a younger person then. Wow. I'm still young now, Abby. <laughs> we will go to Poly, we will go to you. Oh my God, if I do this. Okay, Chicago. I'm coming to US this year. I will let you know. I will let you know. I like to see all my old people. You will prosper in Chicago. You will do well. God bless you. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Daddy, what should I do to increase my commitment to the things of God? I like this. Let us all share in this. What can I do to increase my commitment to the things of God? And I said, I love God. Love God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Love God. And ask God for his grace. What can I do to increase my commitment to God? Ask God for the grace. Then launch out. Then be intentional. It takes intentionality to serve God. It takes intentionality. You are intentional. You are dedicated. You are devoted. But the apostle said, this one thing I do, I look away from the thing of the past, I look to the front, I press forward. You are intentional. God is God loves me, I'm going to love him. I tell people, God loved you, he gave you his only begotten son. What are you giving for loving God? So, what can I do to increase your commitment? You read the word of God. Serve God, join a good church, and launch yourself out. Totally get sold out to God. It's an intentionality thing. It's a decision. It's a personal decision. I am going to love God. You know, we just spoke to those that were addicted to alcohol. And we are telling them how to get out of addiction. We are supposed to be addicted to God. And addiction grow. Addiction grow. It doesn't come in one day. So, get to love God. Get to read His word. Be in worship. Get a good church. Go through their training. Join the service arm. I mean... Get a pastor, get a mentor, and just grow. We grow. We grow in the things of God. So it's an intentional thing. And the Lord will help you. I like your desire to be more committed to God. But you need a good environment, a good church environment. You need a good pastor mentor. And then you also have to be intentional. You need to make up your mind that you are going to love God. It doesn't matter what a lecturer or a professor may teach the student in the lecture hall, it is the student that get back to their hall and go back to what the lecturer taught them and do more research and consult all the uh, books that were referred that will do better. It is not what the lecturer taught in the class. It is what the student go back to begin to research 
and put in his mind or her mind. So the same thing with growing in the Lord and knowing God. It's an intentional thing. Ask God for the grace he will give you. But launch out and build up. All right? Is anybody... Everybody be reading, be reading what is on your screen. People are answering questions. People are putting information there. Elvis Orue on YouTube, he said, Yes, sir. Sir, you said you are going to talk about me and my wife that quarrel. And I haven't seen that. I have since seen that. He said, You and your wife are always quarreling. Is that you? Orue, is that you that said you and your wife are always quarreling? Okay, I said that last time. I said I'm going to start from there. Oh, there are so many things here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have not gotten there. Uh, if you and your wife are always quarreling, Orue, you are the husband, then you must play the role of a husband, maturity. If you respond to everything that the woman says or does, one will end up being less of a man. So I didn't see that, but I'm going to, I'm going to work on it when I see you. Adi Walu, Adi Doja, this is our daddy. Let's, let me read to you what daddy said. Daddy is 80 something. Daddy is 80 something. I think daddy is 86 or more years. And daddy said, Give God your full time or talent and treasure, and God will grant you His grace. That's an elderly advice. He's asking for what He can do to increase His commitment to God. And that they are the only saying, Give God your full time, your talent, and your treasure, and God will grant you His grace. All this always say yes or so. Elvis, please. You will have to have patience with the woman because you are the head of this house. If anything happens to that marriage, you are the one God will hold responsible. You are the head. When we say a man is the head, that means responsibility. Uh, I don't know how much you know yourself before you married yourself, but whatever it is, once you are married, it is patience. It is, I think we are coming to it. I think we will come, we'll come to that. All right, so have I answered commitment to the things of God? Now, how, Daddy, how can one overcome pressure from extended families? Hmm. Nigerians, Africans, especially Nigerians brand, this question is for you. How can one overcome pressure from extended families? If I want to be very, very frank with you, there are many Nigerians, Christians, that are not able to raise their head in life, are not able to amount to anything because of the pressure from extended family, because of our tradition of, of, of bringing family, extended family issues to encumber and slow down and hold down anyone that wants to rear heads. My concern today has been, why are you looking for a permanent job? So whatever they pay you, gather money towards a particular venture. But sometimes, most of the times, family pressure will not even allow you to gather any money. You came to Lagos or to Abuja to work and to fight for yourself. They will send three or four younger people to join you there. You keep feeding them. You keep feeding them. <laughs> you keep catering for them. You have not gotten your, some people have not even been married. You are not yet married, but you have sent your uncle's children out of school. Your father had gone to marry more wives and brought more children for you to train. African affliction. African affliction. I think I've told you my story. Everybody read my book. Read my book. If you have not read this book, go and read my book. I told the story of how I have to run away from my family. For over eight years, I ran away. I ran. Because 
if I had stayed in that setting, you will not know me. I cut myself up. That was what brought me to Ibadan. And for about eight years or more, it was just at a distance. And please, if you want to help your siblings, help them from a distance. Don't bring them inside your business, inside your home. Some people will even bring their younger ones into their marital setting and destroy their homes. No. So, pressures from the family, you have to first of all let your own focus be clear. Where are you going in life? What are you working towards? What's your vision? What are you defined for yourself? And cut away from your siblings, minimally. Cut away from them and while you are still building up, reach to them minimally. David, like I told you, there are two uh, aspects of David. There are two skills that showed David to the world, David the king. There were, there, were, there, were, there were two skills that brought David up in life. His music skill and his shooting skill. Both skills are learned outside of the public view. It was when he got busy with taking care of his father's flock in the forest, in the wilderness, that he learned the skills. Why the sheep had been grazed in the morning and in the afternoon from the scorching sun, kept them under a tree. David was either practicing his music or practicing his shooting skill. The two skills that brought him up in life, music and shooting, were learned when he withdrew himself from the public, from the noise. You know, he was the one that was always sent to tend the sheep. It was his music skill that brought him before the king it was his shooting skill that brought goliath down before him his music skill brought him before the king his shooting skill brought goliath down before him you know the story when saul was invaded with some demonic spirits they had to look for somebody who could play music and bring down the presence of god somebody said i knew one son of jc so that brought him before the king. And when he brought Goliath down with his shooting skill, that brought his fame up. So what are you building into yourself when nobody is there? So you've got to cut yourself away. If not, your extended family, Nigerian tradition, African tradition will milk you. One rich man among six poor people, poor people have become seven. One rich man Within among six poor people, poor people had become seven. So I cut myself off those years to build up, and now I am the I am the king of the family, and I have enough to help them. Those who misunderstood me then, those who were quarrelling with me then, they now love me because I am now able to help every one of them, put their children to school, set them up on the business help them in their lives because i have built up the same thing with jephthah jephthah ran away to the bush and built an army for himself train himself and train the army sometimes we need to take ourselves off in order to build up to train up to add value to our life to establish our financial base then we can then come as much as they need there is nothing anybody require from my extended family by the grace of god today that i cannot do my best but if i stay there with them all of us will be rolling in the gutter of poverty <laughs> all of us will be rolling in mediocrity so i am able to give this cancer because i am coming from that background that's where i came from that's where i came from that's why there are, there are, there are teachings here there are guidance we give you here you cannot read it in any book there is no foreign person that can teach you because he doesn't have your own background. I am coming from the background you are talking about. We are extended family. We extend their afflictions to you and hold you down. Except to receive teachings like this so that we can come back and help them. Today I have come back to help my siblings and their children. But if I didn't cut myself away those years, me and them would be on the same level. 
I don't know. It, it, it looks like a, do you do you it looks like that cancer? Maybe not all of you will accept that cancer. But I have seen those who allow family traditional setting to cripple them. And they became and of course, you know, everything has its own time to everything. There is a season and a time to everything in life. There is a time attached to everything in life. You don't have all the time to do what you want to do in life. And nobody's getting younger. When we talk about investment, building up your life, it is better in your younger days. It is better before you have coaches, married children before they begin to come. It is better you do it in your younger days. Anyway, Daddy, you are very correct. Obi de Christi, that's my, that's my cancel on that. Patience, I worry about you are laughing. Tutu, I don't believe you are laughing. Ogola, no, I hear you, sir. Tutu, absolutely, daddy. Even many of you abroad, if God is not taking, your family will not allow you to even build up anything. No, they think that you just get dollar and pound sterling and euro, you just go to the machine and be drawing it out every morning. They don't know you work for that money. <laughs> anyway, please let your focus in life be clear. Let your vision in life be clear. Draw a graph for yourself and walk towards it. They will come and celebrate you later when you are in a position to help them. But you should, please, package your life that you develop yourself first. You survive first. You build up first. And then you can then give back to where you came from. Pressure from the extended family. Are you blessed? Are you getting something from this? Pastor Lola Taiwo, Daddy, you are talking to me. You are talking directly to me. <laughs> Pastor Lola Taiwo, Daddy, you are talking about me. Oh. <laughs> That's where I came from. To only the grace of God. If I have stood, if I have not caught myself, with me and them, we'll be rolling on the same floor today. So what should I do when my husband mostly when my husband is mostly silent on me? Aha! I want husbands to talk here. What should I do when my husband is mostly silent on me? I know husbands that they, are, they will just go silent. They go mute. <laughs> they just mute the system. <laughs> they answer you in monosyllables. When are you going out? Oh, are you ready for your food? Mm. I'm talking to you. Okay. <laughs> no, syllable. no communication, no flow, no paddy paddy. What should I do when my husband is mostly silent on me? I said wisdom, prayer, and then talk. Then my question, was he always like that? Was that how you started your husband and wife life? Has he always been silent on you? Or it was not how you started, but at, at a point that came in. Then you trace it back. What happened? Do you have some excesses? Are there some things he had talked to you about, warned you about, told you he did not like and you were still doing? And then he decided to, to mute. <laughs> he decided to mute. And that can really be troubling. That can be very, very painful and troubling. I can imagine that house, silence, especially, except if you have children, you have to talk and make noise with. And if your husband is listening to me, please don't go silent on your wife. Husband, don't go silent on your wife. I think this one is mostly from husbands and from wives too. Don't go silent on your husband. I think you should discuss. Find time, you two, with wisdom, roll back. How did it happen? When did it become like that? What were you doing? What attitude? What was your behavior? What are the things he warned you about? How is he? Then sit down and discuss. If you need to apologize to each other, it is not good for husband and wife to keep, keep mute on each other. God made us for each other so that we can discuss, we can share, lighten up, plan, and roll together. Adeva Mikola Wale, it depends on your attitude to your husband. Dollar for Gundipe. Prayer, patience, and communication. 
I only allow victory. Good evening, sir, from Manchester. Husbands, talk to me now. Ah, a wife is saying the husband has kept silent on her, on her, and I'm asking you to talk. Talk, oh, talk, oh, talk, oh. Aha, Tutu said, Tutu Ademolu, change your ways. Old habit is dangerous. And if continue, and if you continue, is tired, then pray. Please, prayer, wisdom, and then communication. Find a way to draw him out. In fact, in my note here, I said, the both of you should respect Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wife, submit yourself to your own husband. Ephesians 5, 25. Husband, love your wife. That is as husband and like wife should really. Okay, I'm asking another one. So, for your husband that is keeping silent on you, you need wisdom, you need prayer, you need to find out what were your excesses, what are the things. Has he warned you, had he complained about certain things and you kept doing it? And of course, if the man is also listening to me, that is not how it should be. Whatever the case is, communication. As long as there is communication in marriage, there is hope. Communication must never stop in marriage. Whatever the case is, sit down, discuss, and iron it out. I believe some people are also talking here. Okay, Daddy, how can husband and wife be free from quarreling all the times? Aha! I think this is where my brother was asking. The one that was asking about quarreling. Elvis Orui. How can husband and wife be free from quarreling all the time? I want happy husband and wives to please make contribution. Are there couples, are there husbands that are, by the grace of God, are happy, less quarreling. There is no way husband and wife will not want once in a while, but it shouldn't become the pattern of their life. Are there husbands out there or wives out there who by God's grace, God has helped you to be able to rise up to this challenge and you are no longer quarreling all the time. You are friends. Please talk to us. Somebody is saying, how? I said here, the two of you should apply Bible guideline for marriage in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 where he said wives submit yourself to your own husband and in verse 25 husband love your wife as Christ loved the church if the wife is doing the submission and the husband is doing the loving then friction will be less so patience accommodating each other and being matured in marriage note the area of disagreement and avoid it the area of, of, of disagreement that always brings quarreling, avoid it. And I've said again and again, when husband and wives have issues, the one that said to the other, darling, let's talk about this issue, let's settle, is the most mature. The one that is saying, mm, no, please, no, leave me home, leave me home, I don't write to no, don't want me doing your own, don't give me. That one is an immature one. The first, because when husband and wife have issues, sometimes friends to friend, the problem is ego. Am I the one that will go and beg him? Am I the one that will first of all talk? Ego. And we have to remove that one. The person that's the first one, either the man or the woman, that say, ah, darling, let's settle this thing. We shouldn't carry this thing too far. That's the most mature person. The one that is resisting, no, leave me alone. Don't go. That one is not. Go and pray on your own. Just leave me. That's how you always do. That one is immature. So please sit down and talk and of course and i believe this is a product of you not being properly friends before you marry friends do have disagreement but they never separate they never keep mute on themselves they never keep quarreling all the time so but whatever the case is once you are married ask god for the grace be patient with each other accommodate each other weaknesses talk less about each other's weaknesses and celebrate each other's strength and then accommodate you know, marriage is, I have said, marriage is a game of uh, forgiving each other. Two people just keep forgiving each other, accommodating each other, looking, you know, talking less about each other's weaknesses and celebrating each other's strength, avoiding what will make your husband or your wife, you know what infuriates each other, avoid it. Okay, Tutu said, no two captains can control a ship. Learn to listen, accommodating, and learn to say, to stay quiet. 
to hear the, the order. Vitalis Chukwemeka, probably the woman nags too much and the man has been complaining without the woman even eating the complaint. Yes, the woman should just look inward and check what it has, what it, it has, has been the complaint for a while. That's true. Apologize and promise to stop. I think that will help. Yes, yes. Vitalis, you are right. Ogulano, Oluwabomi, understanding between each other, marry your friend. <laughs> People did not hear the teaching of marry your friend before they signed the dotted line. <laughs> before they said I do. You know, when I see the brother and the group signing at the side, I say, I hope you know what you are signing. <laughs> I hope you read the thing well. <laughs> oh my God. People did not hear good counseling. You know, pastors will say, marriage is the only institution where you are awarded a certificate without attending a lecture. <laughs> You are awarded certificate without attending any lecture or writing any exam. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please connect your children, connect your friend to Tony Point Global Family. Let them learn these things. Don't allow your children to make the mistake you made in marriage, in business, in all other areas of life. And you love victory. As we grow together, the wife should learn how to keep quiet and treat husband like your children. The only way we could stay happy, happy is see him as your child, wife. 27 years now, but it takes too long before I use this time. Ha, 27 years in marriage. Ajibo ye for lake at just laughing. It's, it's true. They are signing. They are signing. They don't know what they are signing. <laughs> and in marriage, goose once purchased are not returnable. <laughs> Goods once purchased are not returnable. You got, to, you got to carry your cross and manage it and trust God and get used to each other. Wow. <laughs> My God. The lack of belief you must understand each other and discuss issue with love. She did my Judith laughing. What are you people saying on uh, YouTube? Sandra Paul, you are just laughing. Oh, with the Christy, that deal, okay, Christy, that deal, I've given you the cancer today, so please work on it. There is no perfect marriage. I hope there is no perfect, I hope you know there is no perfect marriage. Like, uh, who now said it, okay, uh, 27 years in marriage, you said. So somebody said, it's not 27 years, okay, I don't love victory. He said, 27 years now, but it took long before I used this time. You are 27 years in marriage. I am 40 years in marriage this year. <laughs> 40 years in marriage this year. And we are still not perfect in our marriage. But then we have come a long way to accept each other as we find ourselves, trust Jesus, and forget the past and just look forward. So there is no perfect marriage because there is no perfect human being. And two imperfect human beings cannot make a perfect union. But we can come to a level where no matter what happens, we move on. So please, <laughs> I am just enjoying myself here, watching from Kano. God bless you. EGK Val EGK. We say the truth as it is. On all our purpose today, you are just laughing. Engineer Lawrence, A.K., in most cases, we must be humble to say sorry to our spouse, even if they are at fault. Sorry should not be too hard for us to say whenever there is misunderstanding. Do you know that word, sorry? Very expensive to some people. They can't say it. And yet, sorry can solve a lot of problems. All right. Hey, we are going to, we are going to stop here. I think so. Somebody said, Daddy, what should I do to be free from backbiters? What should I do to be free from backbiters? I said, give them more results. The best answer to your backbiters, the best answer to those who oppose you is to have more results. Greater result. Instead of backbiting, they become your fan. When your result is outstanding, they become your fans. And of course, 
don't reply your backbiters. Don't join issues with your opposition or you lose your position. Don't join issue with them. Sambalat and Tobiah said to Nehemiah, come down. Come down to our level. Don't get down to their level. Keep doing what you are doing. That, you know, they are, the, a boss does not backbite his or her subordinates. You don't backbite people that are below you. It is people that are having better results ahead of you that people backbite. So don't mind your backbiters. Keep doing what you are doing, getting bigger results. All right? I don't allow you to say, keep getting more results. The best answer for your position is more results, more increase, more advancement, more progress, more money, more strength, more anointing, more value. And then you keep them quiet. Your result is silence their backbiting voices. Amen. I think we should stop here. It's about time. Are you blessed? Did you get something to add to what you have before? Will you be a better person? Will you extend this knowledge to some other things, your own life, and some other people? God bless you. Okay. I can see uh, people already replying. She did my duty. The best answer to your barbiter is to get more progress, more value, and more testimony. Vitali Chukemeka, thank you so much, Daddy. All right. We are meeting again on Monday. But every day, listen to me on Turning Point. And on Thursday, join online with our prayer mountain services, 7 to 9 a.m. and 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Nigeria time. I love you. I love you. All of you are also saying, I love my daddy. Yes, so daddy. Gloria. Fini. Timipire. Yes, sir. Vitalis. Greatly blessed, sir. Yes, so daddy. God bless you. For last Shadi Owa. God bless you, Daddy. 40 years is no joke. <laughs> yes, so it's no yoko. <laughs> 40 years with a man, 40 years with a woman, not be yoko. <laughs> well, thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his power. I love you. If you are sick in any part of your body, please lay hand. I remember our communion is tomorrow morning. Prepare your communion tonight and let's have communion online all over the world. As soon as you listen to the message, I bless your communion. Take it as family. Ask your children and your loved ones to join all over the world. May the Lord bless everyone tonight. Touch you where you hurt. Lift you where you are falling. Increase you where you are having progress. May His grace be strong on you. May His power be on you. We pray for Nigeria. The remaining elections shall be peaceful. And through this electionary campaign, the Lord shall take over. The Naira squeeze. The Naira redesign problem will come to an end. By the judgment of the Supreme Court today, the Lord will walk through the central bank system of Nigeria. Life will return back to normal. We will go ahead. Whatever you have lost through this Naira redesign program, the Lord will restore you back to you, lift you higher. Bless your ministry. Bless your family. Heal your body. Wipe away your tears and replace it with laughter. The Lord bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you.